Jamie here with Royal Blue Construction. Today we're gonna to go through part one, design and demo of a bathroom. So what you're gonna see here is the master bathroom ensuite. They got an acrylic insert and that's what we're gonna be pulling out during demo, double vanity, and then some builder's grade tile on the ground. Over here to the right, you got a deck tub that we're gonna be pulling out as well. So what I do is I peel the back open here. I wanna to get to my water valves and uh, I'm gonna cut them, cap them, control that water don't want to have any leaks and I unfortunately had I think two leaks on this job just uh, giving her and uh, not paying attention where I was cutting so I just go out of here with a copper cutter clean them up put some shark bite caps on it and just contain that water for the demo until you can kind of get it open and see where you want to run things after that so what I do here is I pop the top there's a couple buckles on the back and I just reached through and kind of pried them and snapped them off. There was two buckles on the middle part as well, so I just popped those off and, and that was able to pry it off the wall. There's the base. I'm just going to pry it up. I disconnected the drain off camera and did all that work before I did this. So I, I popped it up, got it out of there, and uh, got these walls exposed. What I did here was I just put on an old sawzall blade and ran it and buried it right through the grout lines. I was going to toss the blade after, so it, I felt it was better than running a grinder through there. Just weakened up the grout joints, and I was able to pull off each section relatively easy. The only thing is there's quite a bit of weight, so uh, if you're working by yourself, maybe break them up a little bit more. As you can see here, there was more weight than expected, and I got that right off the melon. Uh, that woke me up pretty good. I feel like I was almost knocked out at that point, so just be aware. Um, so what I do here is I just go at the deck tub, start popping the tile off the steps. Didn't have any video of that, so here's some pictures. And then I uh, found some old C plus and Shep or ED cans in there. Now I'm going at the vanities, disconnect the plumbing, pop the countertop, um, get the sinks out of there, and then again go at the water. So typically they just kind of core drill through your um, your bottom panel of your vanity and a uh, nice close up so that you know you don't have a huge hole there. So when I'm pulling this apart, I got those shark bite caps on it and they don't really want to slide through there. So I take an oscillating saw or a multi tool or a saw saw, whatever you have in your tool bag. And I just kind of open it up, just go at it systematically so I can pull it apart and that way I can get the vanity out of there and uh, not have any leaks. Pop all three of these out and then uh, start going at the acrylic deck tub and I just took a sawzall blade, chopped it up and then uh, kind of broke it up with a mini sledge and got it out of there piece by piece. Pulled the base out under that, they had uh, just threw in some mud there to try and catch it and level it out a bit. So here we are going at the builder's tile, it was pretty easy, no wire mesh, no um, decoupling membrane or anything like that or any. so just straight to plywood, anyone who's done that knows it comes up pretty easy. Just go out of here with a chipping gun. Make sure you got a mask on when you're doing this. Um, lots of dust. Usually try and do some form of dust containment. I kind of clean it up and here's the after product. All I had was the toilet. I did that a separate day. And the way I go about my toilets is I'll take this product right here. It's called Liquid Lock. Toss it in there. It's made by Odie. It jellifies your water. Makes it a real easy clean up. Unbolt it. Shut your water off. And then flush your water here. Toss it in. And again, jellifies it makes it super easy i take a garbage bag throw the toilet in there contain all that mess on the bottom and uh, if you're going through a house you don't want that dripping anybody who pulls a toilet knows what's on the bottom of that so I'll just throw it in the bag and and it turned out real good nice and clean here we are got the floor opened up and ready for the curbless shower so let's talk bathroom design uh, there's a few things you can do here you might want to plan ahead um, on your shower size, you can dictate what tile you're gonna get. You could do like a two foot by four foot, but then if you have a five foot shower, you gotta figure that out uh, ahead of time or you're gonna have some off cuts. Another couple of things to factor in is the most common thing you're gonna see in a bathroom is a bathtub. If you have kids, if you don't have kids, then you might just consider doing a shower. And then your options there are, do you do curbless, which is kind of what we're doing here. You're gonna see a lot of that now. It's very sleek and modern or there's a curved one, which is essentially a dam that keeps your water contained in there. You usually have a panel and a door. Curbless, you have that option where one, it can be wheelchair accessible. Two, you can do no door and have it a wet room. The things to factor in there is your waterproofing. You're gonna have a lot more of that if you're doing curbless or wet room or even a steam room. The other things to consider is, do you do a niche? Um, where do you do the niche on each side? What size do you do lighting inside it? Um, do you do a multi-level niche, little tray for soap, 
Um, the other things to do is do factor in a rain head. You're gonna have just your typical shower head or a sliding handbar that you would typically see right here or do you do a jet system right up the middle? So there's a few things to consider there, obviously cost. Um, and then what do, what do you have going on in your house? Do you have kids? Like if you have kids, I wouldn't recommend a big tower unit with Jess. It's almost like a car wash on your body, right? You're gonna, you're gonna blow their hair right off their head. The other things that you can consider on design is heated floor. Um, it's a nice thing to add in a house where you come in, you set the timer, your floors are warm every time you come in at that same time every day. You can run that heated floor into your shower and if you decided to add a bench in there, you can actually wrap it up and over the bench. Another option that you'll see often with builders is just an acrylic insert. That's what we took out of here. Um, usually they build the ceiling down with a bulkhead, they just put an acrylic insert. It's quick, it's easy. Um, if you were on a budget, that's something you might want to consider. So in terms of cost, the acrylic insert is the cheapest. And then up from there, you're gonna have an acrylic bathtub and then there's different size tubs you can do. And the reason those are cheaper is because of the waterproofing, right? You have to do a lot more work when you do a shower. So, and then from there, you just do a, a curb shower and then after that curbless and then steam room, wet room. So another thing that you can do in your bathroom is a freestanding tub. And what that means is it's not mounted to the wall. They're more modern, they're a lot more common nowadays. Uh, they are more expensive, but they're definitely sleeker, they're nicer. You're gonna have about a three foot faucet with it. And there's some really cool features with that and something to add in there that you might want to consider if you're doing a freestanding tub is what do you do on that wall behind it, right? Because you got kids. Do you waterproof it? Do you tile it? Do you put a wood accent wall? Is it just drywall? If you have kids, I would recommend making that either tile or something in a vinyl assortment so that you're not going to have to worry about organic material uh, growing mold. Another feature that you want to think about in your bathroom is your vanity. Um, there's a lot of styles here in the cost. You can start at, you know, the 150, 200 range at Home Depot. And I think the sky's the limit on that. I mean, for me, I think the most expensive one was a $7,000 vanity that I put in. Um, and then, so two options there is you're gonna have one that's a full unit like this, or you're gonna have a floating vanity. It hangs on a French cleat. They're pretty common now. They're sleek. They allow you to have a bit of storage underneath. One thing to factor in there is kids, uh, you will be cleaning underneath a floating vanity, guaranteed it. Um, what else? The other thing to consider is your lighting. In this one, we've done four pot lights, only three inch, not four inch, and they are dimmable, and you can do 3K, 4K, 5K, which is how bright. Um, something to consider is placement of that. We have a rain shower head on this one, so we had to factor in a few things. We also have a design that we are transferring to the ceiling tile. So we had to factor in where our lights are gonna go. So just a lot of planning when it goes into a bathroom. Think ahead, talk to some friends that have gone through it. Now, the next process is gonna be tile design. And this is something that you could get so caught up in that there's so many variations, styles, uh, materials, layout, um, patterns. So take your time here. Guys, get a note from your wife. Most tile places are gonna require that before they put your order in because whatever you're thinking, I promise you, your wife's not thinking the same thing. So just get on the same page. In this one, we've talked design. Um, you're gonna wanna follow along. This is part one uh, of a multi-part series. And this is gonna be a curbless shower. We're gonna have a freestanding tub in this area. We're gonna do a 3D accent wall over here. Uh, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one.